guys, what's up? My name's Eric and I'm the Techie Agent and today we're taking a look at the Skydio R2 Autonomous Drone. So this is gonna be a two-part video series review. The first part, which you're watching right now, is gonna be mostly informational, where I talk about some of the shortcomings of this drone, uh, some of its strengths, and just kind of give you my thoughts and impressions of the drone. The second part of this video series uh, is going to be more practical, hands-on, where I show you some footage and talk about how the drone flies through the air and some of the more practical things about the drone. So first of all, let me just go ahead and give you kind of my first thoughts and impressions of this drone. Drone. This drone does have some perks, some nice things about it, but it also has a few things on it that kind of leave me concerned as well. It comes with this beefy battery. And when you combine both of these together, you get a pretty heavy aircraft. Now that being said, again, it's a big battery, so I'm not too concerned about flight times uh, on this drone. I'm gonna go ahead and put their listed flight times on screen now. Now we'll actually test that out here in a little bit and see if we can actually get those kinds of flight times. You just simply take the battery, it magnetically attaches to the body of the drone, and it has these little pin connectors on the bottom of the drone, and the battery just snaps right in, and then you have a button to and turn on the drone. Then the drone comes on, and you'll see we've got LED lights indicating that the drone is on. On the top of the drone, you'll have three cameras, and these cameras are 180 degree sensing cameras. So there's no, no cameras on the side or back of the drone. These cameras do all of that detection on the side and the back because they are 180 degrees. The same thing is on the bottom, you'll have three cameras on the bottom as well. These also detect in 180 degrees each of these cameras so that you get uh, full coverage, 360 de degree coverage of the drone. You've got three on top, three on bottom. They're both shooting in 180 degrees, so you get coverage that way. Now you'll notice here that the prop configuration is a little bit interesting. We have two motors that are down facing on the front of the drone, and then you have two motors that are upward facing on the back of the drone. An interesting design, it doesn't really matter to me with one possible concern or exception, and that is that the top facing motors, similar to the down facing motors, are very open. You can look right in and see all of the guts of the motor, and they're not really capped off or sealed. DJI on their drones has tended to kind of steer towards capped off um, motor and casements so that if there's dust or moisture kind of floating around in the air, it's not getting into the internals of the motor. This is completely opened on the top, meaning if there's any sort of dust or moisture in the air, it's going to get right in there on that motor and could potentially you know, be a problem. Now, obviously you shouldn't be flying in dusty or wet conditions. These drones aren't made to do that. However, there are times when you're landing a drone in kind of an area that might be a little bit dusty, a road or a sidewalk that might have some dust and you're kicking up some of those things. And that could certainly end up inside the motor encasement here. And that just concerns me again, just a little bit. One of the things that I really like that Skydio has done is that every single drone is shipping with a carrying case. And it's a nice carrying case. DJI should definitely be paying attention here because they never ship their drones with a carrying case unless you purchase it as an additional accessory. It's a little thing, but I appreciate that Skydio did that. Now the Skydio R2 base kit is flown from your phone. And so the phone does give you some pretty good functionality. However, it does limit you in a couple of capacities. One, your range, you're gonna be flying within Wi-Fi range of your drone. Um, and so you're not gonna be able to extend out your reach uh, without any of the controlling accessories, um, which we'll get into here in a second. And so I would definitely recommend if you're thinking about picking this up to at least spend the extra money to get um, the Beacon controller. The Beacon controller gives you some additional range but then also it, it allows the drone to be able to track you from the beacon uh, even if it loses kind of a visual on you the beacon will allow it to still be able to track you and know where you're at. Uh, the beacon also has some other functionality in it, allowing you to control the drone, um, you know, where it's at in proximity to you, if you want it in the front of you, behind you. This, this little uh, beacon allows you to do all of that. Additionally, it allows you to push the drone further away from you uh, or come closer. And then it also allows you to kind of point into the sky to create paths for the drone. 
So the Beacon gives you some controlling capabilities that would either be annoying to use on your phone or just aren't available on the phone. So I would definitely recommend if you're thinking about buying this drone to at the very least go ahead and pick up the Beacon controller because it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier using this drone. Now, if you're wanting to use this drone as your one and only drone, something that would re actually replace maybe a previous DJI drone that you've been using, then you should definitely also pick up the full manual control which I have here. Um, it just, to turn on, flips up. You'll notice that the LED light lights up. And then this has this little spring-loaded um, holder holding area for your phone. Um, now, it's not gonna have the range, even this controller is not gonna have the range of the Mavic Pro Series drones from DJI, but this is gonna extend your range even a little bit more beyond the beacon as well. Um, and then on this side here, you've got some controls um, that control the gimbal, that control the the drone and so we'll go over some of these controls here in a little bit now the quality of this uh, particular um, controller isn't great my understanding is that skydio outsourced uh, the production of this controller um, the beacon controller actually feels like a quality device it doesn't feel like a flimsy plastic cheap remote um, but the plastics on this on the other hand do feel a little bit cheaper um, not terribly so but definitely not the same quality that you're getting from the drone and the beacon controller itself that being said um, you do get full manual controls with this and the great thing about it is that you get full manual controls with the camera sensing abilities of the drone which means that you know you can fly this in a full manual mode and those cameras on board the drone are going to keep you safe and away from obstacles so you can try to fly straight towards a tree or towards a house or whatever and um, you know in full manual mode but the drone will have those safety features enabled, those cameras enabled that will, um, you know, make it so that you don't fly and crash your drone into the house. So arguably, you know, this would be the safest manual drone, uh, in, you know, consumer drone that's currently out there. And, um, and so if you're used to flying a drone manually or coming from a DJI platform or wanting this to be your one and only platform uh, in terms of drone flying, then I would definitely recommend that you also pick up uh, this controller here, which allows you to have those fully manual capabilities. Now I should mention also as well that the drone and both of these controllers uh, all charge via USB-C. There is a USB-C cord that is included in the, uh, the package to charge the drone as well as a charging brick for the drone as well. Now in theory this drone should be uncrashable because of it, all of its sensing capabilities but in the case of where you do run into some problems and damage a prop there are four spare props that are included uh, with the drone as well. Actually I take that back when I looked at the drone they only give you two spare props so they must have a lot of confidence that you're not going to crash this drone. But we're going to test that out right now. Hey guys, thanks for watching. To check out part two of this video, go ahead and click on the video link on the left on your screen now. Thanks so much. My name's Eric and I'm the Techie Agent. We'll catch you next time.